Now, it's good to see you here in the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. It's always good to meet in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Good to see you. Good to have some visitors with us today, and we appreciate your presence. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up, we can be an inspiration to you. And you in the radio listening audience, if you have a friend that's a shut-in, why don't you get on that phone right now and call them, have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. Now, take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, page 1222 in my Bible. Page 1222, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. While you're turning there, let me invite you to tune in and get our daily broadcast Monday through Saturday through the facilities of this station where you're now listening. And pick us up each day at 12 o'clock noon. And we appreciate it. My wife said last week that the man from over around Bowman in that direction came by and wanted to see me and just tell me how much our radio minister meant to him. Well, there's hundreds, even thousands that benefit from this broadcast, and it's always a blessing to know or hear from some that concerned is blessed by it, to tell us that they're blessed from the broadcast. We have a list of many cassette tape. We have a 178, I believe, listed. And you can get these cassette tape. And by the way, today's cassette tape would be 183, 183. We're speaking on the uh, th a subject or the theme in Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ? How do you get in Christ? What is, what is meant by that position? Tape number 183. And we'll send you a list of 170 some odd if you write in and request it. And remember we send these tape out for a gift of $3 for each tape. And then the gift is used to help defray our radio expense. Now, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. And you pray for me and write to me. Now, during these days of vacationing time, when a lot of people are taking trips on vacation and getting their vacations, sometimes it's very uh, difficult to maintain a faith ministry. Seems like this time of year, in the next couple of months or three months, people seem to forget uh, the work of faith. I hope that you'll pray for us and not forget us on up until after Labor Day. It's always uh, rough for a faith minister to maintain his ministry. Now, this is not a fly-by-night ministry. If God permits us to see the last day of August, uh, then we'll, we'll have then broadcasted 37 years daily from the classic city of Athens, Georgia. 37 years every day. I thank God for the open door and the privilege and for the people that God raised up to help us get the gospel out. There's some few right here at the church today that's been standing by this ministry for from the very first day we went on the air, some uh, almost 37 complete years ago. And we had some to help and drop out and others to help and drop out along the way. But we thank God for everyone whom God has touched and showed them the value and need of this ministry that's invested in heaven and in souls and blessing the shut-ins and people in prison and various other places. And it is a whole mission work and we have thousands of listeners out there on the Lord's day and many, many listeners throughout the week. And we thank God for this open door. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I want to begin reading with verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. There are diversities of administrations but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but in the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. 
to another the word of knowledge by that same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gift of healings by the same spirit to another workings of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirit to another diverse kind of tongues to another interpretation of tongues but all these work is that one and self same spirit divided to every man servantly as he will now let me pause here to say this some of these gifts are still in operation some of them ceased when the apostles passed off the scene and God gave the complete Bible. Then there's no need for some of these gifts he mentioned here. They ceased at that time, but some of them are still intact and still God is giving them today. Now verse 12, for as the body is one, hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit? For the body is not one member, but many. Now my text is found in verse 13. For by one spirit, notice the capital S. That means the, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or the third member of the Godhead he's talking about here. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Now the phrase in Christ is mentioned 48 times in the epistles. Now you keep that in mind. 48 times in the epistles you find the phrase in Christ. Now no doubt some of you have wondered what is meant by God saying or Paul saying here in Christ. Making that statement in Christ. You may ask the question am I in Christ? If you are saved, you are. Now the very moment that you repented of your sins and received Jesus Christ into your heart by faith, the Holy Spirit of God baptized you into the body of Christ. And you become part of the body of Jesus Christ in which all true believers belong. Now there's a difference between the body of Christ and the local assembly. Now we have here a local assembly we call the North Side Baptist Church. And you that are saved and members of this church, you're part of this local assembly. But you that are saved, you are also part of the body of Christ. You've been baptized into that body. Now before you should ever unite with a local assembly, you got to first of all, or should first of all, be part of the body of Jesus Christ. And you become part of that body the moment you're saved. You're baptized into that body. Now here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 is the only definitive uh, portion of scripture in the Bible referring to the baptism that you'll find that's applied to the church age. The only one. Now some of the others speaking of the baptism back in the beginning of the church age when God was bringing all the component parts of the church and bringing them together to unite into one church and one body. But since that time, there's only been one baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit takes place the moment you're saved. Now you can say baptism of the Holy Spirit or baptism of the Holy Ghost. But that is regeneration. That's when you're saved is when you receive the baptism if somebody should ask you today or sometime in the future, have you received the Holy Ghost or have you received in other places to be ye filled with the Spirit? There's only one baptism but many fillings. And you must always remember that you're baptized by the Holy Spirit the moment you're saved. Now you have those today that teach error. They'll tell you you need to be saved today, sanctified later and then later. Receive the baptism. That's unscriptural. Just as unscriptural as it can be. That's not taught in the Bible. They're not right in dividing the word of truth. They don't understand the word of God. Now there's only one baptism. And that's when you're saved. And that's the way you get into the body of Christ. You can't get in Christ any other way. You join the church. You can reform. You can turn over a new leaf. You can be baptized backward and forwards, but you can't get into the body of Christ but only by one way, and that's by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That happens the moment you're saved. That's what's called the new birth. 
The Bible says you're born of the Spirit and of the Word of God. That's the new birth. That's what happens. The Holy Spirit bursts you into the body of Christ, and that's called the baptism. Baptizes you, places you in the body of Christ. Now, whenever you go for water baptism after you're saved, what does a minister do? If he baptizes you scripturally, he will put you down under that water, and you're under the water, completely under that water, in that water, under the water, and that's the way you're baptized, and you're brought out again. Now, that's what the Holy Spirit does to you when you're saved. You're placed in the body of Christ. You're baptized into the body of Christ. And you remain in the body of Christ as long as you're on this earth. Now, remember that. I don't know where you are in the body of Christ. The Bible said the body has many members. You may be part of the foot. You may be part of the hand. You may be part of the body some other place, but you're in that body. One man in braggadocious way said one time, I know what part of the body I'm in of Christ. Someone said, how do you know? He said, well, I'm the corn on the little toe, and everybody that touches me steps on my corn, and I know that must be me. I must be, that must be where I am in the body of Christ because I've been hurt so many times, he said. Well, he was only guessing about that. Nobody knows what part of that body you're in, but there's one fact, and that is you're in that body, and you don't put yourself in that body. You have no more to do with being baptized by the Holy Spirit uh, than you had to do with your first birth. A lot of people say, well, now I'll tell you how to get the baptism. You come on down and get on your knees, and you start saying this, and, and you quote after me, and you repeat this over and over again, keep on repeating that, Somebody be on one side saying, hold on now, brother. Somebody on the other side saying, now turn loose now, brother. And you just keep on and start beating the altar and start to just keep on saying it over and over again. And then you'll finally get to baptism and you find yourself saying something that uh, people don't know what you're saying. Now, that's not biblical. That's not biblical. Beloved, that's not right, that's wrong, that's contrary to the teachings of the Word of God. That's not the way you get to baptism. Now, sinners, I mean, Christian people are not to seek the baptism. Somebody says, well, now you got saved. You start seeking and keep on seeking until you get to baptism. That's absolutely unscriptural. Nowhere do you find where you are to seek for the baptism. You have the baptism when you're saved. It takes place then. And then God places you in that body by the baptism. And then after you're saved, then what you need to do is line up with God's people in a local church where you can have fellowship, where you'll have a pastor to feed you and help you and guide you, where you can pray with others, where you can uh, pool your resources, where you can work together in getting out the gospel and be a member of the local assembly and say, that is my church, that's where I belong I belong to that local assembly. Now, the local assembly is very, very scriptural. If you read your Bible in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, you find there's seven local assemblies in Asia Manor that God picked out to tell John to write to. Paul went all over the country establishing local assemblies. The local assembly is very important. Now, how would you like to live in a town or a nation where you had no church, no local assembly. Now, the reason God's blessed America today like it has is because of the local assemblies that believe this book like it is, preach to people like they are, and follow the Word of God, and God's blessed this nation. America's been good to the Jew, and God's blessed him for that. America has sent multitudes of missionaries out across the world, and God uh, has blessed them for that. Now, the churches today, the independent Baptists, are sending out multitudes of fundamental Bible-believing missionaries. Did you know this? Now, this may give you the lockjaw, but you listen to me. Did you know that the independent Bible-believing Baptist church in America are sending out twice as many uh, Bible-believing missionaries as the Southern Baptist Convention? Now, think about that for just a moment. Now, the independent Baptist people in America believe in missions, and they're sending them out and supporting them on the foreign field, twice as many as the entire Southern Baptist Convention. Now, that's something that ought to put you to thinking. 
Now we believe in that. That's why you belong to a local assembly after you're baptized into the body of Christ. Then you come and unite with a local assembly and let the pastor baptize you in water. Now that baptism in water doesn't add to your salvation any more than walking into a mule stable and make you a mule. Beloved, you're baptized into that water as a symbol. That's a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that is commanded. Oh, you may say, now, Preacher Edwards, I remember uh, when I joined the church, they put a little water on my head. All right, and then if they put a little water on your head, what does that mean? You say, well, I, that's when I was baptized. No, no, you wasn't baptized, you were sprinkled. Now, if you got salvation in your feet, then just go ahead and wash your feet. That's all you need to do. If you only have salvation in your head, then go ahead and sprinkle a little water up there. That's all you need. But if you have salvation in your heart, then let the preacher baptize you the Bible way and immerse you, put you down under the water, and bring you out again. That's a biblical way. If you have never, if you have never been baptized, you have never been immersed, you've never been baptized. One of the things that disturbed me greatly when in my first trip to Rome, Italy, then from the Vatican, they have a huge uh, statue of John the Baptist pouring water on the head of Jesus. That stirred me. I, that, I'll tell you, that made me right angry. That's completely unscriptural. That's deceived millions and millions of people. They think that's the way he was baptized. He wasn't baptized that way. The Bible says he went down in the water and came out again. He was emerged in the river of Jordan. John the Baptist didn't just pour a little water on his head. If he'd have poured water on his head only, why would he have gone down in that river? He went down in the river that John might baptize him the biblical way. And then you go on the inside and you see a statue of Simon Peter. Big old black statue, the dark statue there of Simon Peter. And so many people, it's made of iron. And so many people have kissed his toe until just about wore his foot halfway off. Millions and millions and millions of religious people have gone in there and kissed the toe of that uh, uh, image there of Simon Peter. That's pitiful, isn't it? A lot of people think that means something, kiss the toe of Simon Peter. It's abomination in sight of God. Why do that? Why would you want to kiss that iron statue, kiss his toe until you wear the thing almost off his foot? That's all uncalled for. That's religion does that, not real true salvation. So you're in Christ if you've been saved. You go all the way back to the Old Testament and you find that God said to man, I want you to build a boat. And in that boat, I want you to place three stories. In that boat, I want you to put one door. And I want that door in the side thereof. And so old man Noah, for 120 years, he and his boys built that boat. That boat is about five times as long as this church. Our auditorium here is 100 feet long. And that uh, boat was uh, five times longer than this church. That boat was as wide as this church is long, at least 100 feet. That boat was as high as this church is wide, at least 45 feet. That was a huge boat and there was no water to float it. Now, Noah had to build that entirely by faith. And for 120 years, he preached and preached and built and hammered away. And the skeptics came around and mocked him and scoffed and laughed. They said, old man Noah and his family down there has gone as crazy as a bat. They're down there building one of the biggest boats you ever saw, a huge thing. They're putting three stories in that thing. And they only have one door and they're putting that in the side thereof. And Noah kept preaching and kept hammering away. And there he concluded the job on the boat, he and his sons. And there stood a huge boat and one door in the side. You know what God said? God said, Noah, I want you and your wife, your three sons and their wives to come on the inside of this ark. Here comes Noah and his family. But God told him also, now before you come in, I want you to fill her up with the animals you have out there. Put two of each kind and sacrificial animals. You can add more for sacrifices. But I want two of each kind. So here they come. Two cows, 
two horses right on down the line. They went into that ark. And when Noah had supplied the ark with the animals and fowls that God wanted in there, now the only thing that was spared through the flood in the way of fowls and animals happened to be the fish. They remained in the water. They were safe. But the rest went into the ark. And so they went into the ark and God said, Noah, he said, yes, sir. Uh, God said, Noah, come on in. You and your wife and, and your three sons and their wives, come on in. I'm going to drown the whole world. I'm going to drown everybody but you and your family. And I want you to come into the ark and then let you start all over again. The human race is full of violence. There's much crime in those days, full of violence. The Bible says, as it was in the days, so shall it be, just like we have today. Murderers, robbers, thieves, rapists, cusses, blasphemers. The land is filled with violence. And God said in the end time, it'll be like it was in the days of Noah. There'll be violence on the streets, in the homes, in the schools, on the jobs, in the air, and everywhere there'll be violence. And so we have it today. You, you know that to be true. He said, Noah, come on in. Now, when Noah came in, he was on the inside of that boat. Not on the outside, but the inside. Now, you must remember, he built that boat by faith because no water had fallen up until that time. Not a drop. God moistened the ground with the dew that came up from the ground, the moisture from the ground. And that's the way he took care of the vegetation in those days. And so he had to build the ark by faith. Now, when the people came by and said, Oh, man, why are you going to get your water? There's no water around here nowhere. No doubt it's a long way from the ocean. And the, the people said, Why are you going to get your water, old man? He said, Don't you, don't worry about that. I just do what God tells me to do and let God take care of the rest. And so he finished that ark and God supplied the water. Now, as the water came down, the ark went up. That's what Simon Peter meant in 1 Peter where it said eight souls were saved by water. Now these are, are Camelites today and they uh, use that as salvation, but that's not talking about salvation at all. That uh, souls were saved by water, eight souls saved by water. That is, they were saved from drowning, saved from being put to death by the water as the water lifted up that boat. So they were on top of the water riding that boat. And they were on the inside of that boat. Now, they didn't have to worry about falling out. They didn't have to worry about a thing. The Bible said that God told them to come in, and they came in, and God shut the door. And the Bible said when God closes, no man can open. There they were on the inside. I don't suppose they had a worry in the world. Maybe Mrs. Noah might have heard a few termites down there biting around and kind of got shook up because she most certainly didn't want to see a hole in that ark. Let that water in. She might have got a little afraid there. I don't know. I can't prove that. Not disprove it. But they didn't worry about a thing in the world. And they floated upon that water for many, many weeks. And then God says, all right, it's time to let you out. And God let that uh, ark settle down on Mount Arat. And they came out. Now, beloved, they were in that boat shut in by God and they couldn't get out. Nobody could get in. God put them in there and God took them out. Now you listen to me. You are in Christ today. There's not enough demons in hell to get you out of Christ. You have been put in Christ. If the devil could get one of you, one individual, out of the body of Jesus Christ, he'd be more powerful than the Son of God in that respect, and he'd get every last one of us out. Therefore, the devil can't get one person out of the body of Christ. There's no way. If the devil could get us out of the body of Christ, about time the body was finished, the devil would probably tap down again and God would have to start all over again. Now, God has been building the body of his son now for almost 2,000 years. See, Jesus is ahead and God is building him a body. And the saved people make up that body. God will place you in one place, another in one, and God is building the body of his son are the bride to be of his son. The Bible recognizes the man to be the head and his wife the body. And so God is building a body, a body for his son, Jesus Christ. And the material God is using are born again believers. Saved people are making up the body of Christ. Not just mere church members or religious people. I'm talking about saved people. And God is placing them somewhere in that body. 
So you today, you're somewhere in the body of Christ. One thing I believe he's been building on it now for 2,000 years almost. And I believe the body is about finished. And you're in that body. And God knows those are his. And you belong to him. And don't you worry about falling out. A lot of people look at salvation like a person riding a bicycle. They think when they quit pedaling, the thing will fall over. Now, that's not salvation. Now, you have people that believe in human efforts and works for salvation that believe that kind of stuff. Salvation by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so we don't work to get in. We don't work to get out. God puts us in by faith, and God keeps us by his power. And God is building himself a body, a body for his son. And the devil can't take one soul out. Now the Bible says we're a little temple built up with little stones. And God is building that temple. He takes you a little stone and puts you here. And another little stone and put him there. And another and put her there. And God is building a, a temple. And when God finishes building that temple, that means the body is complete. Then God is finished with his job he set out to do from the beginning. God set out from the beginning to build his son a body. To build a temple. Started that back with Christ and the apostles. Christ achieved foundation stone. And God is building upon that stone. Each little pebble that goes in there is adding to that temple. And one of these days it's going to be finished. And God say, all right, that's it. Now what is the Lord going to do when he finishes the bride-to-be of the body? See, you're in Christ. You didn't put yourself in there. You can't take yourself out. You were put in there when you realized there's a lost sinner... And you repented and accept Christ as your Savior. The Holy Ghost baptized you into that body. And you're in that body if you're saved. If you're not in that body, you're not saved. If you're not saved, you're not in the body. It's that, that simple. And you need to realize that. Now when God finishes that body, you know what he's going to do? He's going to say, all right, head, the body is finished. And the head is coming down and meet the body in the air. The head is Jesus. And 1 Thessalonians 4 tells us he's coming down and he's going to catch out the saints of God, the head, or catch out the body. And then the head with his body will go to the judgment seat of Christ, there to be judged. Now, are you saved today? If you're saved, you're part of that body. You're in Christ. The phrase in Christ is mentioned 48 times. And so you're in Christ. If you're not in Christ, you can get in Christ right now. You can get in Christ today. Be saved today. I trust you will. Now, if there's some of you out in the radio listening audience that would like to have this tape today, it's number 183, In Christ. In Christ is the subject. Number 183. Write in and get your tape. I appreciate all of you listening in the radio listening audience. If you're not saved, some of you, you ought to repent right now. Give your heart to Jesus Christ because you don't know when God's going to call Pointed him in once to die, and after that, the judgment. A lot of people have left home and said, I'll be back a little later, that they brought him back in an ambulance and maybe come back by the way of the mortuary or by the hospital. So you listen to me. It's appointed him in once to die, and after that, the judgment. If you're not right with God, you ought to get right with God today. Get on your knees, say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and let God save you. I trust you will. You have listened well here in the auditorium. Stand to your feet for a word of prayer. Our Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we thank Thee for our position in Christ. Lord, we're so glad we we're placed in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Lord, there may be somebody here today that's not saved, or there may be someone here today that's saved, that's looking for a local assembly, a church to join where the Bible is preached and believed. God, there may be somebody in the radio listening audience need to get saved today or need a church home. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll do that that needs to be done. We're looking to you for guidance and strength and wisdom and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while John plays on the organ softly, if you're here today, you're not saved and you want to get saved, would you come down here and let me help you? I'd be glad to do so if you come. Would you, if you're backslidden on God and you'd like to come back home to the Lord, would you come today while we wait? I've delivered the message I felt that God would help me to deliver. Now it's left up to you as to what you're going to do about it. 